just what did those rare Venus pictures reveal? For what reason are they so important to our comprehension of the second planet from the Sun? As NASA readies its newest missions, one lingering question remains. In the 1970s and 1980s, the Soviet Union sent out the Venera probes. What did they find? What would happen if NASA does find evidence of life on Venus? Have we missed any hints? For decades scientists have been captivated and baffled by this mysterious and extremely hot celestial body. Come explore the fascinating past and promising future of human endeavors on Venus with us. Welcome to Spaceverse, your portal to the wonders of the universe. Today we embark on a cosmic journey delving into the mysteries of our celestial neighbor, Venus. In this installment, we focus on a pivotal moment in space exploration, the first and only photos of Venus. But before we dive into the details, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest space discoveries and updates. All right, let's get started. Mission Venera in Russia. It has never been explained why the Soviet Union of all countries decided to target Venus. Some say the country spent astronomical amounts on Venus exploration to gain an unfair advantage over the United States in the space race. Others argue that Russians at the time had a wealth of information about Earth's biota that they kept to themselves. Which is true, we may never know. Repeatedly it has been suggested that both Russia and the United States are hiding crucial space knowledge from the public. But for the time being let's focus on the facts. The Soviet Venera 14 spacecraft touched down on the surface of our hellish neighbor Venus on March 5, 1982. After 57 minutes of use, the technology on Venus succumbed to the extreme temperatures and poisonous air. Nevertheless, it was one of the most fruitful space missions ever. There has never been anything quite like the color panoramic photographs, tape recordings, and data from the atmospheric descent. The fact that a probe managed to operate on Venus for over an hour at all was in and of itself. Nothing short of miraculous. The Venera 14 probe wasn't the only one that made it to Venus. Throughout the 1960s, 1970s and 1980s, the Soviet Union sent multiple spacecraft with the collective name Venera to investigate our fiery next-door friend. Depending on its position and its orbit, Venus is not much farther from us than Mars. Venus faces the Sun, whereas Mars points outward toward the other planets. This suggests that the average temperature on this planet may be higher than on Earth. However, the actual temperature on Venus is so extreme that it defies scientific explanation. Even though Mercury is nearest to the Sun, Venus is undeniably hotter. Experts in space travel and science began considering which planet humans might one day visit as early as the 1960s. America first looked to the Moon, and now it has its eyes set on Mars. The USSR started looking to Venus for answers. Spacesuits and oxygen may make human stays on Mars viable, despite the fact that it was already obvious at the time that a human being could hardly land on this planet. Even the finest defensive measures will quickly fail on Venus. The probes themselves were works of art. It took approximately 30 years and the efforts of Russian engineers to complete them. The nation has been sending probes to Venus for a long time. Early probes failed to reach their destinations, while later ones either crashed upon landing or had camera problems. Eight made it to the ground during the duration of the program, with four capturing breathtaking images. The Soviet Union took great pride in disseminating some of its scientific discoveries to the rest of the globe. However, it is safe to assume that Russian scientists did not reveal all of their findings to the rest of the globe. The Venera missions occurred during the height of the Cold War when relations between the East and West were at an all-time low. Doing the unthinkable and making it work. The reason it's so difficult to land on Venus is tremendous temperatures and great pressure inside the atmosphere. Even though information on Venus's final climate was accessible in the 1950s, the planet was still shrouded in mystery. This is because Venus is always covered in clouds too thick for telescopes to see through. It's simple to observe Martian topography from Earth, but viewing Venus from orbit is out of the question. About 475 degrees Celsius can be expected inside the atmosphere. That's hot enough to instantaneously melt lead, and more than seven times hotter than the hottest air temperature ever recorded on Earth. The dense cloud causes air pressure on the surface of Venus to be more than 80 times higher than on Earth. Similar pressures can be found more than 914 meters below the surface of the sea on Earth's oceans. The combination of the intense heat and atmospheric pressure will quickly degrade any spacesuit. The Venera liners, however, were constructed to last through such extreme environments for long enough to collect data and provide us with our first view at Venus's surface. 
Therefore Russian engineers created a complex shield perhaps from extremely cooling metals and other materials just like those utilized in the modern Parker Solar Pro. Naturally the Soviet Union or Russia has never revealed its precise probe construction plans. We know that the Venera 9 and 12 probes were spherical with an inside compartment designed to keep electronics safe from the effects of air pressure and heat for an extended period of time. For landing a shock absorbing ring lay beneath the sphere. A cylindrical antenna structure and a large dish-shaped structure which appeared to be an antenna but was actually an aero brake were mounted above the pressure sphere. While externally similar the Venera 13 and 14 probes were technologically superior. Following their initial landing successes, Russian astronauts gained the confidence to outfit their probes with increasingly delicate and costly pieces of technology. They feature devise us to make scientific observations of the ground and environment after landing, including cameras, a microphone, a drill and surface sampler, as well as a seismometer. During their fall into Venus's atmosphere, they also recorded electrical discharges with onboard instrumentation. The focus of the scene was on the camera. The camera which was safely housed inside the lander was expertly illuminated with the aid of a telephotometer. Early Venus Photography the first mission to attempt photographing Venus's surface was the June 8, 1975 launch of Venera 9. While the spaceship's landing was successful only one of the two camera's lens caps came off. Instead of capturing a full 360 degrees around the lander, just 180 degrees were captured. Regardless people on Earth saw the alien environment for the first time. Many of the angular worn rocks that dot the landscape are partially buried. The horizon is somewhat obscured in the top left and right corners, but its presence feels curiously fortuitous, as if it were hinting at the discovery of something crucial. The white object at the bottom of the photo is part of the lander. This is due to the outdated Venera imaging system, which has never been updated. In 1975, on October 25th, Venera 10 finally made it to Earth's surface. Once again just one of the lens covers came off cleanly, and the resulting 180-degree panorama was blurry. Scientists say the brightness was on par with a hazy summer day here on Earth. The darkened items at the bottom of the frame are spaceship components, while the terrain above them looks to be covered with flat slabs of rock, not unlike those found in volcanic regions on Earth. Venera 11 and 12 landed on Venus in December 1978 and gathered information for more than an hour. While both missions attempted to take color photographs, the issue with the lens caps persisted. Thus the landers transmitted useful information but were unable to capture pictures. Engineers made several improvements to the design of Venera 13 and 14 in response to this lens cap failure, resulting in the first color photographs ever sent back from Venus. On March 1, 1982 the Venera 13 probe touched down on Venus. The lens caps were successfully released, and the cameras began shooting a panoramic photo around the lander. After 127 minutes, the probe's technology wore up under the strain of its surroundings. However, that was long enough to get a colorful picture of Venus's scenery. Amazingly, this image of Venus's strange environment, with its flat, dark, stratified rocks and fine-grained soil is still the best one ever captured of the planet. Another probe, Venera 14, landed on Venus on March 5, 1982, four days later. This time, it was in a different part of the planet. The soil in this region of Venus appears to be more coarser and more fragmented than elsewhere on the planet. The shot captures both the distant horizon and the expelled lens cap. These stunning images reveal a little more of this fascinating world to us. They showed us a sky the color of butter over a broken, forsaken landscape that appears both foreign and familiar. Venus's environment is too hostile for any terrestrial organism. It's possible though that this planet was previously Earth-like before a cataclysmic climate shift. Is this the end for Earth as well? NASA's interest in visiting Venus waned for a long time. This occurred at the turn of the millennium, since there was essentially nothing to refute the Russian discoveries. The United States like Russia had to cut costs, making spending on things like the Venera series impossible. For quite some time researchers have been concentrating on planets and moons like Mars that are thought to have formerly supported life or that could potentially be colonized in the future. A biomarker was then discovered by American scientists on Venus. It's possible that there are microorganisms on this planet. There were also rumors that the Venera missions had discovered life signs, but that the Russian scientists had kept this information to themselves. These surprising discoveries have prompted NASA to consider sending its own probes back to Venus. 
From above the clouds to below the surface NASA's Da Vinci Plus mission will investigate Venus's history, development, and current condition beginning in 2029. In order to determine if Venus was ever livable, the Da Vinci probe will travel to the planet's orbit and look for indications of life. It's possible that profound shifts in our own world are only getting started right now. Some climate scientist models predict that the greenhouse effect and subsequent chain reactions will eventually transform our watery verdant globe into an inhospitable wasteland. We might be able to create technologies that better safeguard our planet if we learn more about the processes now. Da Vinci will also send a camera-equipped descent probe into space. NASA's lander would be the first spacecraft to land on Venus since the Venera probes if the mission is successful. The probe will make a one-hour drop to the surface during which time it will take thousands of measurements and transmit new high-resolution photos of the area. Since the Da Vinci Plus descent probe won't have a panoramic camera, it's possible that the ancient shots from the Venera landers will remain the greatest up-close pictures of Venus for a long time. As we wrap up our journey today, a big thank you for joining us at Spaceverse. Your support fuels our cosmic exploration. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep exploring with us. Until our next cosmic encounter, see you.